What's going on, guys? And welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today, we'll be talking about the first car that collectively, as a Marvel Snap community, we have all acquired at the exact same time in Kitty Pride. Really cool feeling. Wish we could do this more often, right? Like maybe once every few months. Uh, but either way, she's definitely a top tier car that uh, you could be using for your one cost slot. And you might want to be putting her in your decks. Now, whether you have a low collection or a max collection today, I'll be sharing with you the decks that I've just been testing and testing and the best fits for her within the game. Some are much better than others, but if you want to build your own, we'll also talk about the best card combos and counters to look out for when playing your brand new card. And we go ahead and start there with the card combos, and we got to start with Beast, who is by far the best friend of Kitty Pride, guys. Her biggest downfall is costing you one energy per turn, but if you play Beast down, then you can go ahead and get the plus two power for free every single turn. Now, naturally, Angela Bishop are going to be just great cards. Angela uh, just kind of goes back to her launch date self, just super solid of a two cost card. And Kitty makes her absolutely bonkers. Uh, but at the same time, the newly buffed collector as well feels really solid uh, when paired up with Falcon. Now, naturally, the cool thing about Kitty is you want to play a lot of low cost cards with her typically. Uh, and it feels really cool just like bombarding the board with all these low cost options. And some of the cards that she kind of works with that aren't these low cost cards are going to be things like Dracula to absorb the kitty you've been building up. Uh, at the same time, Moon Girl just multiplying these different kitty prides is going to be really advantageous to put multiple power on the board. Magic is naturally great to get just a little bit more power to kitty pride as well as just having other cards to play alongside her if you don't bounce her back uh, with playing like a six cost card and kitty on turn seven. Uh, I think Iron Man is super solid as well. Uh, you're going to notice today five cost cards are the ones that you probably want to play uh, because you could go and play them both on turn six. And naturally, you'll be able to build up Angela and Bishop and then Iron Man and, and maybe Kitty in one lane can win the other. Now, Shuri is being slept on, but I think Shuri and Kitty naturally have a lot of synergy. And even Taskmaster allows you to play like 20 power on turn six. Now, as far as cards to look out for when playing your Kitty Pride, obviously uh, Sandman is going to restrict you from playing her and naturally just benefiting from what she does best. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more of those with Wave and how she interacts now. Uh, Negasonic, uh, not a lot of people have her, but definitely a cheeky option to just, you know, a dead kitty you, you can't play. So uh, pretty solid there. Killmonger is obviously a natural great card to counter and probably the most common one you'll see out there as well as Electra. Now, Master Mold and Maximus are both other kind of counters. If you spam the opponent's hand, well, Kitty can't jump back and get that bonus and their deck is probably designed around doing that. So I do like both of them as well. All right, so let's go ahead and talk some decks, guys. So definitely, I think Kitty is uh, a bit more linear than maybe Nebula and Sunspot goes, but she does still fit in a large amount of archetypes played a lot of games and she felt <laughs> just cracked. I don't know if it was the games that I was just playing, uh, but I definitely have decks that I think perform much better than others. And as they continue to get refined, I'll be sure to update you guys. Uh, but we have things from bounce decks to more zoo style to just crazy ideas that are going to get even better. Let's go ahead and start with our first deck and what I think is currently the best. And it's what I like to call animal bounce. And guys, I got to tell you, this deck is simplistically amazing, but at the same time, very big brain filled with a lot of different bounce options to give big stats to a wide variety of cards. We have things like last month's season pass card in hit monkey, the collector newly buffed. We have Bishop. We have Angela. So many different things working for huge stats amongst low cost cards, and it feels really good to play. I will say there's a lot of moving pieces here and it can be a bit tough knowing when to play which cards, but the biggest mistake I see and the number one tip I have for you is do not play Bast until you get the most value out of it, right? Uh, Kitty should be your priority to play first most of the time, uh, but you want to look for cards like Hood, Hitmonkey, Angela to get the most out of your Bast. And uh, probably as far as replaceable cards go, it would be either Iceman or Korg. Now, actually the version that I play doesn't even have Korg in it, I like to have America Chavez, and this is the other version of the deck. And again, you're looking to get some big combos off. Now, another small tip is I like to play Hitmonkey down, uh, typically around turn three or four if I do have Beast in hand, alongside another one drop, and bounce him back to get a kind of a double proc on the monkey. The collector is just pure stats. You have cards like the Hood, Kitty, you have obviously uh, Beast, and then Falcon to feed loads of stats and then you get lots of demons and so don't let the low power fool you and in between bishop and angela both of their stats are also going to be through the roof now following those two decks i have two other decks that are kind of neck and neck as uh the, the next two of my favorite that i 
got a good amount of games in and they both feel really good and we have dark disrupt bounce now as you guys know in the meta deck report we've uh, featured disrupt bounce plenty of times really strong deck utilizing black widow korg and a lot of this clogging mechanic to build up not only your dark hawk but also all these other cards in combination and with kitty she's gonna offer just a ton of help as well your main win conditions of having dark hawk kitty the demons angela bishop and hit monkey all together working it's really hard to beat this deck across multiple lanes uh, again dark hawk as you know just a really solid card and having the ability to bounce both korg and black widow back multiple times to not only obviously disrupt uh, the name of the deck here your opponent but also build up the power in dark hawk I'll be honest, guys, it's real close which one I'm going to go full in on an in-depth guy. So let me know down in the comments below which one I should focus on. Now, believe it or not, but Sarah Control combined with Kitty is actually something that works out really well. And it's with a lot of moving pieces. And again, it's a counter deck, right? So Sarah Pride Control is right now one of uh, the more consistent ones that I've played. Again, I always lean back on this deck. You have an answer against uh, really everything, especially when the meta shifts you have a deck that uh, does a good job countering all these experimental meta decks and kitty pride just fits in naturally right uh, now obviously you got to look out not to kill monger your own kitty it's pretty hard to do that uh, but we have nova in the deck to spread to our mysterio clones we obviously have the bishop and angela uh, that would be in this deck either way and so that's why kitty works well scarlet witch is probably the most replaceable but i, I actually find her really clutch in the deck and then, of course, you got this steady flow of power with Sentinel and then Shang-Chi and Enchantress for the countering. So really solid stuff here. Obviously, Sarah can't discount your one cost cards, but being able to have an explosive turn six on top of already having big power in Kitty. And then you play multiple cards with Hitmonkey and uh, you can end up winning like two lanes at the last turn of the game with your explosive turns as long as you don't get hit with Sandman or Wave. All right, now for our next deck, we have Dark Destroy Bounce. And as you guys know, I'm, I'm big on what I like to call kill bounce but i saw this kind of version roaming around and, and i like it a lot so essentially guys you have the destroy package combined with uh <laughs> lo and behold dark hawk right great value card there uh but you have an answer for pretty much everything with the deck you have shang chi for the countering of course you have the same packages that we've been talking about multiple times today and then killmonger can always be played before kitty getting rid of the opponent's one cost and then obviously you have your own powered up you have Carnage to eat up those Mysterio Illusions. You have Beast for just like a number of different value, right? You can bounce back almost any of these cards for good value, which is what I like. Even like something like Shang-Chi if they cheated out a She-Hulk early. Really fun deck. It has a lot of potential. And, and again, we're kind of focused on this Nova explosion on your Mysterios. And you just get a lot of power built up at once. All right, guys. Next deck up, we have Kitten Litter. And this is a junk style control deck. A lot of fun, really complex, but at the same time, it can deliver just incredible results. I myself had roughly an 81% win rate, uh, only 22 games, but still, I think that's kind of crazy. Uh, so in the deck, right, we have a lot of just good stats. We have Titania, Nightcrawler for movement to trigger Miles Morales. We have Spider-Man to lock down a lane and, and also obviously Polaris to get that Miles triggered. We have Green Goblin in the deck and Daredevil. You obviously can replace multiple cards here. You can have Professor X as a play. Um, but I like Gamora mainly because obviously you can play them both on turn six. Or you can take advantage of Gamora on turn five having Daredevil. Uh, Green Goblin is there also to help you against things like Galactus. Spider-Man, Shang-Chi serve that same purpose. And overall just a good clutter deck with a lot of stats moving all at once between Angela and Nightcrawler synergy and then obviously Kitty Pride. Alrighty, now moving on to some of the more experimental but really fun decks. As you guys know, Kill Bounce was just a creation that I love to make within the game. And I kind of tailored it more to fit Kitty Pride. So really the name of the deck is to build up stats, get a lot of destruction going so that we have a powerful null that we can use and abuse. Now, this deck is probably better if you have Iron Lad and you can, uh, you know, get Arnim Zola for the Arnim Nola combo. But this is a good shell with a lot of potential and with the new death, I, I think it's got some purpose. Now, obviously, you can't play Null unless you have Kitty Pride bounce back. Uh, but you can get death down pretty reliably, leading to just some monster stats, especially if you play some versions with, let's say, Hit Monkey. Uh, but mainly, guys, you're looking to get Yondu and Hood out there. And then you can always Falcon those back. Or you can go ahead and beast them back as well. And then also, we have a new and approved Venom that we can utilize, as well as Killmonger. Don't forget, guys, everybody else is playing Kitty right now, as well as Nebula. So we get these 
nice snipe offs on like turn five to get a big powerful null uh, and if that's not enough you obviously have shang chi as well if your opponent plays wave you always play null if you have any opportunity to play null you want to play it and then you know of course galactus decks you have null and death to kind of counter that as well as shang chi all right we have a couple more here and this is going to be kitty dino uh, now, for those of you guys with, like, very low collection levels, you can replace Maria Hill, Agent Coulson, and Quinjet, especially if you're in Pool 1 or Pool 2. Uh, I'll give you guys a different version of the deck. Uh, but I think there's actually some good synergy here with Kitty and Devil Dinosaur. Now, obviously, I gotta use my boy, Agent Coulson, and we're looking to get as much bonus from the collector as humanly possible. We have Quinjet with Agent 13, Agent Coulson, Maria Hill, Moon Girl, White Queen, so many different discounted cards. And then, of course, we can always play Devil Dinosaur and Kitty both together. Uh, but guys, in my early testing, this is probably the one I had some of the most enjoyable fun with. And then, of course, like just all the random cards just equal a ton of fun with the deck. Uh, give it a try. If you like Devil Dinosaur, definitely recommend it. And then, of course, this is going to be the version that I would play if you, if you don't have a full collection. If you're in that pool one, pool two, uh, this is uh, probably what would work best. Uh, if not, you know, you can always run that standard zoo list, the Chad's at the zoo, but throw Kitty in there, and I think that'll do just fine. Uh, but Collector Zoo is kind of this experimental shell that I think uh, it's got a lot of promise, and it does play pretty well. Uh, now, uh, you guys are going to see the main offenders in the deck, right? Uh, Bass, Hood, Angela. You've seen these before because, obviously, the synergy with Kitty. Uh, but this time, we have Human Torch, Agent 13, and Iron Fist. So bouncing back Iron Fist and Human Torch is an awesome play to get some just easy power points. Uh, but at the same time, you can do something like Agent 13. Uh, and you always just want to make sure you're aware of where you're playing these cards so that you can reliably bounce them back. Now, you get a lot of big bursts at the last turn of the game. And even having American Chavez combined with a bunch of zero cost, uh, the deck just makes a lot of sense. You have huge value with Best. Kitty gets obviously a lot of power as well. And uh, I think there's maybe a couple swaps here, but this list has done pretty well for me. And I'm curious if you guys have found a good zoo list uh, because right now this is the one I'm enjoying at the moment. So there you go, guys. Those are the decks that I think are going to play the best. Do remember, she's a bit of a big brain card. It's going to take some time. You know, Sunspot, you just kind of set and forget as well as Nebula. Whereas Kitty has a bit more interactions going on. And so, you know, if you plan on playing her a lot, you want to go ahead and get used to the play style ahead. And we'll definitely update you guys as more uh, Kitty decks come out. I think she's going to be all over the place as far as Marvel Snap goes. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this top deck video. We have a lot of decks about her and decks on the rise after all these crazy meta nerfs. So if you don't want to miss any of that, be sure to subscribe down below as we chase 100,000 subs. Appreciate you guys stopping by, taking the time. And as always, till the next one, happy snapping.